Hey, what's up? Back again. First base note hit me in the chest, and I was just like, there's no way that's too late. MB Enclosures it has his own YouTube channel, and this guy is an animal when it comes to designing boxes. And hey, what's up? More on these cones. More on these cones. Uh, yeah. Hey, I was able to get the second one. And I was like, wait, why y'all, you got sundown on one end, kick on the other end. These two beefing. Why would you put a Masonic's 8 in between here? Because this Masonic 8 uh, is the design that a lot of people are copying and selling it and making you think you get some old wool or something. So I know you can get this for $120 and you can get some, you can get this for $100 and have the same performance as somebody that's charging you almost twice that. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, with that being said, the real reason why I got inside this link is because of the the different material that's being used on that cone. And just to show you with the ones I have on hand, I could have took out the no, nah, that's a paper cone too. But anyway, it's different, it's different types of cones, okay? You have paper and you have plastic. And then you also have metal. The old eclipse, uh, uh, at one point, Fallsgate on their T1 and T2 line was using an aluminum cone or something like that. Uh, I told you about the Eclipse. Uh, TC Sounds, a long time, well, the Epic 8 had that concave uh, cone. So you can use metal too. Sometimes you use aluminum uh, to make it lightweight. And what they're trying to do with the when as a, as a subwoof is moving by the motor and the motor comes alive when electric, electrical signal is applied to it, these cones experience a lot of pressure. The pressure they when they move in the outside environment and the pressure of compression and rarefying the air on the inside of the box. Your cone must be very, very rigid. For years, most companies use paper cones. At one time, that's what Kicker used. Nothing but papers. We talked about in the 90s. So did J Audio. So did Orion. Uh, the big boys. So did Fallsgate. Now everyone from that class has graduated over to using some type of polypropylene plastic cone. Why? Durability. Uh, the ability to achieve a given weight easier than you can with the with the paper or the paper mixture they use to make cones, and then structural integrity. The plastic is more rigid and durable over the life of the subwoofer and in life in general. Put a cup of water. Which one of these you rather me put water in? Pour a cup of water in, a, in this sundown and come back tomorrow, or pour a cup of water inside this kicker? and come back tomorrow. Which one do you think is going to lose some of its rigidity because of being exposed to water? Of course, the paper cone. Uh, so the, the larger brands, the what y'all call the old heads, they know that you can get a given weight and a given strength by using polypropylene. The sound, the, the, the myth that plastic doesn't sound as good as paper and then all the higher-end lines, oh, J-Audio, I'm sorry I didn't mix them as well. J-Audio, most of the cones, uh, the high-end lines is polypropylene, some kind of plastic. And they even have a design with, with those in, with those subwoofers. Like I told you in the last video, the kicker cone is three pieces, just a cone. Just a cone. Not the surround and the spider, just the cone itself is three pieces to put together. And they use a geometric shape to hold its rigidity. Whereas with a paper cone, they use chemicals to keep it rigid. There's no structural support that they can do to the paper. It's just what they put in the mixture to try to give a get, to try to gain a certain weight that or MMS that the motor can move to a chain of desired FS. And because all this stuff works together. Okay, well, you can do it every single time exactly as you want to with plastic every single time see when you mix in something 
you got you're mixing water and Kevlar and different materials and glues to get with the paper cones to help them with their rigidity. Nothing wrong with that, and it also enables them to be a certain lightness, uh, a certain weight. However, you have to do a lot of shaving, molding, and something you got to keep recycling that manufacturing process over to make sure that you get exactly what you want every time. You may not get that with a paper cone exactly what you will with a paper cone in the manufacturing process. I'm sure y'all heard, man, I had two 12s with a paper cone sound like this. I got the same two, and man, it sound even, it sound even better. <laughs> well, there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is quite simply, it's hard to duplicate every single time the mixture and get that weight dead on as listening to pre parameters. But you can do that with plastic, spot on. Very easy. Very easy to get the shape that you need as well to help with the structure and integrity, like the uh, like a, a hexagon shape or a triangle or even a W shape that JR Audio uses behind their cone because their plastic cone is actually two cones together with a substance in between to help with the resistances. That's why you pay so much for it. Another myth they say a high-end subwoofers don't use plastic cones is not true. JL, JBL, Harmon Collin, all the greats have transitioned over to plastic. Well, why these new boys have it? It costs more, fellas. It costs more to design and manufacture this plastic cone than a paper cone. He's a new boy. This is the veteran. They've been doing it. Not saying nothing is better than others. Don't get in there. I'm just letting y'all know fact over fiction. Know what you're getting into. Baby, come snap this video right here because we need the next thing I need to talk about is the MMS and the weight of the cones and how they achieve a desired goal by having a certain weight. Stop there right now. Peace, y'all.